Okay, one of you to begin. My name is Stephen Seymour. I'm an artist and a filmmaker. I moved to downtown Los Angeles in a studio in 1976, and I immediately started documenting the art scene and the artists that lived in what is now called the Arts District at that time. Um, for many years, I shot a lot of film, and I put it together in 1982 in a feature film that can be seen on Amazon Prime. It's called Young Turks. I just recently finished a new movie, a two and a half hour documentary called Tales of the American. It is a building that is directly across the street from the Johannes Brothers building, 50 feet away, and it documents the early history, starting from 1905, of the area and the fact that that area was the first African-American community in Los Angeles in 1905. It then became a Japanese uh, community, starting in the late teens. Uh, it then became a uh, historic community of artists in 1977. And I've documented that, and that is in a new film called Tales of the Air, which is, can be access. Thank you. My name is Jonathan Gerald. I'm the Secretary of Los Angeles Downtown Arts District Space. Uh, it was formed in 2004 to preserve and promote the communities of your arts district. I want to speak to a couple of issues uh, in, in the research, which I think is locally lacking. First, my kind of needs and I think we should defer to the art dealers and collectors and uh, museum curators. Uh, this is a person who was uh, collected and shown at the Museum of Modern Art in New York. And that's pretty much all you have to know to understand that this is an artist of, of, of uh, national, if not international, significance. Secondly, the community has been, uh, the, the building has long been the center of, of uh, artistic production in the community, uh, not only among the Japanese artists, uh, Nancy Lee, Leslie Kito, Jamie Hidikaki, the people that I know, and of course, uh, uh, Bruce Yanomoto, but it has also been, um, a gathering place for artists uh, and people interested in art in the community, and people, including people such as Dennis Hopper, and uh, uh, didn't even get started on the significance of the community. Uh, but I, I, I'll just mention very quickly that the presence of the uh, Sci Art and uh, of, uh, Hauser and Worth has established the community as a true destination uh, as an arts district, uh, and those Place, those two institutions are located there because of the heritage of the community as an arts district. Thank you. My name is Andrea, uh, art, uh, art student and supporter. Uh, what the CHC wants is cold hard facts that makes history digestible. If the CHC prefers charts and numbers, I trust the CHC carefully studied our version of GK, GPA's list carefully and understands it's a sharp improvement. GPA systematically cut out the contributions of Japanese American, Chinese American, and Mexican American artists and art workshops and galleries at Traction whose legacy is the Arts District. It's ironic that GPA thinks that the Arts District is too narrow a topic to consider the historicity of buildings because why else would posh boutiques and developers be in the Arts District if not to piggyback off the culture and wealth created by grassroots artists. Wouldn't it be terrible to highlight the achievements of an ethnic group only to have the living culture erased from the record and booted to the street? When GPA states that by the mid-90s, artist migration tapered due to rising rents, rising homelessness, and social unrest, I can't think of a more flaming contradiction of DLJ, GPA's involvement in gentrification and displacement. Nor can I think of a bigger cop-out on behalf of the commission to, not, to deny your roles of promoting gentrification when the CHC fails to uphold the first two tenets of what makes a resource historically significant and favors DLJ. Um, are you all not the instruments of displacement and eviction? Yeah. Are you not preservers of culture past and present? Is the mediocrity of a building originally designed when the architect's own work is hey, eclipsed by others' desires. Are, are, yeah. are you for the people? Are you for power? Now, TPA's account is racist and religious? Is a class conscious condemnation? 
on a peculiar group called artists, we are here to subvert this establishment. <laughs> Else who was totally missing this thing. 
Uh, Daniel Martinez, who is a very, very important Los Angeles and uh, United States artist, recognized worldwide, also came out of 1800 uh, Traction between 1986 and 89. Um, he got his, his degree at, at, um, at CalArts, uh, went on to become extremely famous, ended up with two Whitney Biennials, um, something that artists are lucky to get one of. Um, he is continuing his artwork today. He was, he was kind of a, a follower of, of uh, Boys, the German, the German artist, an extremely important conceptual artist who uh, Daniel Martinez continued to, to follow in his footsteps and where he teaches today as UCI. Um, he uh, uh, following in Boys' footsteps again by considering education the most important part for the future. One more thing I want to say. He came back to 800 Traction um, in, 19, uh, in, in 1998 uh, to start a gallery uh, across the street at the uh, American Hotel, which became a very, very important uh, art gallery, which apparently uh, uh, helped. I need to cut you off. Right now. Help start the, um, uh, the pop up art district. I'll give him my minute. My What's your name? Longer. What's your name? Linda Longwood. Thank you. Okay, um, he, he started an art gallery, which became very important probably in the pop-up art movement of the, uh, of the last decades. Um, he has continued to be very important, it was important to me, but he represents and these Hispanic artists, including uh, Gamboa, were important in the very cultural matrix of what occurred right there at 800 Traction Avenue and continues to this day. It was the Japanese, the Mexican Americans, and the Caucasians who put together and created a matrix who created the damn art district. We wouldn't even be there if it weren't for them. And it would be a shame if you okayed this recognition, the historical recognition, without the inclusion of all the people, particularly the Japanese Americans, that were important in the development of this of this art, art uh, residence site. One of the people uh, Daniel Martinez showed was Mark Bradford. Wait, you already spoke. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm sorry, Mark Bradford, who uh, was recently recognized as a uh, uh, Lac Bodega. Well, I'm sorry, ago. sir, but you, you used your minute a little bit more. Okay. And now you're really pushing it. Quite polar. Thank you for giving uh, this issue the time. Uh, too many What's your name, sir? Uh, my name is Mark Oberhofer, a 26 year resident of 800 Attraction Avenue. I'd like to thank the commission for giving this issue uh, time and thought and uh, visiting the building. Uh, I'm here today to ask the commission really to request that uh, the application include the building's connection to Little Tokyo and the founding of an arts community between downtown and Wall Heights. Uh, the the uh, Little Tokyo and Japanese American uh, contributions really were not really covered that well. Uh, most of all the artists remaining in the building are Japanese American artists, uh, key figures uh, in the community. Uh, my candidates who were among the most notable of them was covered in a big New York Times obituary. Uh, they felt it was more important for the LA Times in many cases, but. Uh, he was hanging out there at the Cedar Bar with uh, Jackson Pollock, De Cooney, and all the rest of them. So he brought really that to Los Angeles. My, my final and closing here is that there's iconic intersections around the world that we all know. Uh, Haight Ashbury, uh, Hollywood and Vine, where well, Hewitt and Traction, dominated by the towering 800 Traction Avenue building, was at the center of the, the heart of the arts history all through the period that it developed. So why why the contesting that involvement, I really don't know. Both sides want the building to be designated. But uh, I, I have no idea why the other side doesn't want uh, you know our side. Yeah we're gonna get thank into you that. Um, thank you. Uh, you know I don't have a speaker card for you. Yes you do. Yes you do. <laughs> I stole one out. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Oh, by the way, my last my last point is that uh, when I first came here at the first meeting, they talked about the building being the first artist in residence building. Well, based on the research done by the community, the, the, uh, the DBA people here, the building was among the first small handful of buildings applied in '82. It got the designation in '87, 
but all of those few small buildings that apply, most of them are demolished now. Based on their research, all demolished, one of the last buildings left is the Inner Traction Avenue building. Still a scar as the rest of the building. Thank you. Thank you. No, I'm sorry. I've got two minutes. I can give a minute to your honor. What's your name? Mujib Siddiqui. Thank you. Um, there's going to be a Stay show of Mike Khan Mitsu's work. Nancy Wemra. There'll be a show in January of Mike Khan Mitsu's work at the Louis Stern Fine Art Gallery in West Hollywood. And then Ma, um, Bruce Yonemoto, who couldn't be here today, he's going to be showing at the Tate Modern in London next year, as well as uh, South America and Taiwan. He has uh, a busy schedule, so uh, he's an important figure in our building, too. Thank you. Okay. okay. Garcia already spoke. Garnica. Um, how about Pamela Wilson? Mm -hmm. 